Yeah, hello everyone, it's Seth, probably better known as Seth from Olive, and it's time for another edition of Budget Magic, and we have a super sweet deck this week. We're heading to Pioneer to play Metalwork Colossus Surprise, and this deck, oh, I love this deck, it is so good, it's super powerful, it's super cool, as you can see, 96 bucks in paper, 10 ticks on Magic Online, which means it's cheap enough on Moto that you can play it with the free card rental programs, so let's Let's talk about what this deck is trying to do. Jump into some games, see it in action. So we're built around Metalwork Colossus, an 11 mana 10 10, but it costs X less to cast, where X is the total mana value of non creature artifacts we control. So the big goal of this deck is essentially make Metalwork Colossus free and just smash our opponent to death with one or two or three or sometimes four Metalwork Colossus. And then the other upside of Metalwork Colossus is we can sack two artifacts to return it from our graveyard to our hand. That's not like one of our main goals. We're not trying to mill it or anything. However, it does make it very resilient. Our opponent can kill it, and then we just sack some random stuff, get it back. So, of course, to make Metalwork Colossus work, we need a bunch of non-creature artifacts to get on the battlefield. And here we have a few different options. Uh, in the early game, we got Moonsnare Prototype, Alchemist File, Wedding Invitation. They draw us cards, can also mess with combat a little bit, which is nice. Like, Wedding Invitation can make Metalwork Colossus unblockable, which is super, super scary for our opponent once we get it on the battlefield. But the real deal here is our equipment package, especially Bracked Snuckles. Brass Knuckles is the reason that Metalwork Colossus went from basically useless in Pioneer to being a super scary threat. It's four mana. The big deal is when you cast it, you get a copy of it. So this is a four mana value non-creature artifact that actually adds eight mana value of non-creature artifacts to the battlefield because the copy gets to keep the mana value. So that means if we have any other random artifact on the battlefield, Brass Knuckles pretty much by itself is going to make our Metalwork Colossus like one mana even free. So essentially, that's the card that gives us free Metalwork Colossuses. More important, it can give our Metalwork Colossus double strike, which becomes super frightening with the help of like Gilded Pinions, which can give it flying, Haunted Cloak for haste and trample and vigilance. So we can just one shot kill our opponent. A 10 10 with double strike and then some form of evasion is a really good way to close out the game by surprise. And with our good draws or even an average draw, we can be doing this around turn four, getting this huge, hasty, double striking Metalwork Colossus just smashing our opponent to death. Otherwise, Glitness Grain and Genius Smith, essentially just consistency, digging through our deck, find our artifacts, find our Metalwork Colossus, portable whole artifact base removal. In our mana base, the key land here is Sanctum of Ugin. Basically says when we cast a Metalwork Colossus, we can sack it to get another Metalwork Colossus. So often, if we find one Metalwork Colossus, it actually ends up being two or sometimes three Metalwork Colossus. Inventor Sphere also helps find our Metalwork Colossuses. And then in the sideboard, Graveyard Hate, removal for creature decks, counters for control decks, Karn to grind out mid-range and control, and that is Colossus Surprise for Pioneer. That's our budget magic deck for this week, so let's jump into some games, see this deck in action. I'm warning you, this deck is awesome, you're gonna love it. So thanks for watching everyone, I hope you enjoy it, and I'll be back in a bit with a wrap-up. Looking to pick up some sweet, sweet Double Masters 2022 reprints, why prices are cheap? Well, you can snag them all from our sponsor, Card Kingdom, by heading over to cardkingdom.com slash mtg goldfish budget magic time we are <laughs> looking to uh, beat our opponent up in pioneer this week with metalwork colossus and a uh, brass no oh my god two colossi uh well these two colossuses we need to find the brass knuckles mostly but two colossuses could be pretty scary actually three colossuses with the sanctum of ugin if we get there 10th District Legionnaire. I mean, we do gotta stay alive. Well, play the island, play the smith. Oh, there's the brass knuckles. All right, well, we gotta live two, two more turns and we're gonna have Colossi for days. Like literally Colossus Tron. Can we live long enough? I mean, we're at 18. There's a decent chance. So this is eight, nine, 10, 11. Ancestral Anger, Girls of Dorks. Well, we'll see. No point in jumping this turn. Another removal spell would be spectacular. Oh, if we're just too short because our opponent won the die roll, I'm gonna be so sad because his hand is so good. This is like the dream. Reckless Rage kills the Smith, scries and grows. Opponent hits us for five. Well, we will play Wedding Invitation draw a card. I mean, as long as our opponent can't literally 13 us. Glint Nest Crane, well, Spire, go. All right, this is it. This is what, sacrifice it, target creature can't be blocked. Okay, that's not helpful. All right, 
As long as our opponent can't deal 13 damage with this 10th District Legionnaire, we should be good. Homestead Courage. I mean, maybe they can. So that's six power, seven, eight power. Two spells in hand. Scry's a card to the top. Homestead Courage. Goes to combat, hits us. Eight is not dead. Or five is not dead. Five is not dead. So we get to play Sanctum of Ugin. We play Brass Knuckles times two. And here comes the Colossus. Hopefully this is, hopefully this is enough. Uh, so Metalwork Colossus for free. Number one, yes, sack it, get another one. So free 10-10, this is turn four, turn four. Uh, Metalwork Colossus, free 10-10. Metalwork Colossus, free 10-10, go. All right, opponent. Can you beat it? Can you beat our Tron? It is assembled, about it. I mean, we will throw every Metalwork Colossus in front of this and they're colorless, so protection shouldn't get us. Let me look up God's Willing. I think God's Willing does not give protection from colorless, right? It's only colors? Protection from a color of your choice. And opponent scoops it up. Ha, got him, okay. Well, that is, that is why you played the deck. That is why you played the deck. Pona got off to an aggro start, did not matter. Uh, all right, caskets and ether gusts seem pretty good. What are we going down? Probably some of the lesser equipment. I like the chump blockers. Is flying important in this matchup? Actually, maybe flying's better than, and it makes a treasure. Maybe that's better than tramp. Actually, you know what, let's just trim. Trim some of the lesser equipment. Brass Knuckles Colossus stays. We want all the removal. We want the card draw to find our pieces. That was a pretty impressive draw. <laughs> pretty impressive draw. Um, yeah, let's go down one Glint Crane. Run it like that. Well, <laughs> that was, that was pretty good, pretty good. <laughs> I think I like this deck already. How do you beat the Glossi? We're on the draw again. It worked last time. We got a portable hole. Hmm. Well, we can ether hub portable hole, I guess. And then Spire makes our white mana. Our mana is a little, a little janky. Uh, another inventor's fair is awkward. All right, so get an energy. Portable hole. Get rid of the hopolite past the turn. Being able to kill the hopolite both games has been big. That's one of the scariest cards in this deck. About it. Sacred Foundry Untapped. And oh, Virtuoso is also scary. We will play Spire of Industry, Smithy, go digging, get Brass Knuckles. Okay. Oh, we need another removal spell, though. That's that's what we really need here. Because this Virtuoso is like the fastest clock. We have eight removal spells now. Hopefully we can find one and our opponent doesn't have protection. Yeah, Virtuoso is so frightening. Opponent. Okay, 10th District Legionnaire. That's better than us dying. Ugh, Homestead Courage. Connives, grows, discards a land. Gets an hits us. Sure, sure, sure. Ouch. Down to 13. Removal. Metalwork Colossus. Well, playing the island. Glint Nest Crane. We really need to hit a portable hole. All right, Glass Casket. I mean, that's good for the distant future. Past the turn. Well, maybe good. No opponent has a portable hole to get rid of glint nest crane goes to combat oh we will snap chump here uh block drop to 11 and we'll see if they have protection if we can get rid of the virtuoso we're not in the worst shape wedding invitation draw a card inventor's fair so if we go after this and they have, well i guess we're dead to protection no matter what yeah glass casket if they have protection we're likely dead no matter what we do here because they can just protect to white to get through the smith as a jump blocker yeah there's a god's willing opponent gonna connive away a land well we'll see so they got the homestead courage for sure we'll see i guess we're dead but it's not 100 percent yet swift spear okay Homestead Courage. Wow, not going on the Virtuoso. Interesting. Four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Do they have one more spell? Oh, we are at ten. Okay, so we're dead no matter. All right. Yeah, 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 yeah. Well, that is that is about right. Good news is we are on the play for game number three. And as we saw in game number one, once the Colossus has come down, life gets pretty bad for our opponent. Let's go up a glint nest again, go down a haunted cloak. I feel like the challenge in this matchup, I don't think we need to have like some hasty one shot kill with Colossus. We just need to live long enough to get it on the battlefield. Good hand, good hand. We're finally on the play.
Cheap removal brass knuckles colossuses. We got the knuckles. We don't have any removal. I mean, I guess prototypes like sort of removal, but not really. I think we keep it. It's a little, it's a little sketchy. It's a little sketchy. We'll see. Hopefully we draw into removal. We get a redraw here. We got the Nux. We got the Sanctum. So we really need the first Colossus and we'll take any removal that we can draw along the way. Opponent doing some mulliganing, which is a... Uh, not bad for us although really their deck needs like a threat to do what it needs to do spire of industry go about it adapts inspiring vantage and favorite hoplite another brass knuckles eh that's not the best well, one two wedding invitation draw a card that's a colossus okay we're getting close opponent sacred foundry tapped goes to combat hits us for one all right sanctum of ugin moon snare prototype Tab Wedding Invitation, Haunted Cloak, Pass the Turn. Well, here comes the Colossuses. I think this should be fast enough, right? Unless our opponent has some sneaky removal, and even then Colossuses come back, opponent planes. I mean, I think this should be good. This is turn portable hole. Getting rid of the proto prototype actually does buy our opponent a turn here if we don't draw land. Smith, Smith, go digging, get a portable hole. Moon snare prototype. Oh, careful, bear. Grow the smith past the turn. All right, next turn. Next turn. Next turn's a one. That's the one where the Colossus has come. Another portable hole. I mean, if they draw enough portable holes, maybe. Okay, they're going to hit the smith. Okay, so this this is going to go bit badly for our opponent. <laughs> this is going to go a little badly. Opponent gets and hits us. All right, here come the Colossuses, and we draw the land. Okay, so land, brass knuckles double it metalwork colossus double it and opponent knows what's happening scoops it up that felt pretty uh pretty excellent pretty good for a deck as cheap as this deck is that was a pretty good performance i like it <laughs> sweet 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 well let's keep doing that Budget magic time. We are metalwork colossaling, colossusing in. Oh boy, this hand. We're gonna keep this. This hand is the. Oh, if we find a titan, uh, a colossus, we can. <laughs> we can go off. Uh, so three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. We're just short on artifacts. Hopefully, we don't get thought seized. I really want this alchemist file. Cauldron familiar, sure. Well, there's, uh, there's the Nux, uh, Alchemist file. <clears throat> Draw planes. All right, so we need to find the first Colossus, and then we get three Colossuses, and they're gonna be flying, and they're gonna be hasty, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Bounty gets and hits us, sure. Colossus, wedding invitation. Well, play the land. Yeah, let's use our mana efficiently here. Haunted Cloak, go. Herborg, uh, bounty. Probably has a handful of removal. Hits us, passes. <sighs> All right, play the island. Wedding invitation, draw a card. Play pinions, make a treasure. All right, deck, show us that Colossus. We are set up about it, adepts. Thankfully, our opponent's not doing much of anything, which is making our life slightly easier. Opponent combat. Maybe they're, they must be mana screwed. Mana screwed Racto sack. Opponent hits us, passes. Colossus, moon snare prototype. Uh, well, in that case, we'll play Sanctum of Ugin. Brass Knuckles. <laughs> oh, we are set up to have such a, such an absurd turn if we ever find a Colossus opponent. It's nice that we can't get Thought Seize now. That's a little, a little upside. Wow, opponent's still just drawing all the, all the black manas. Hits us for one. Watch us die to this cat before we find a Colossus. Oh my God, that's Colossus. Uh, one, two, three. Haunted Cloak. Metalwork Colossus. Do some sacking. Get a Metalwork Colossus. Do some sacking. Get a Metalwork Colossus. And opponent. <laughs> Scoops it up. All right. Uh, yeah, that was pretty good. So opponent's playing a sack deck. What are we afraid of? So I think that was Racto Sack, where our opponent just drew super unlucky and didn't draw any red mana. What do we want against Racto Sack? I could see arguments for ugh, glass caskets. 
Ether Gus, maybe. Soul Guide Lantern. What are we gonna cut though? That's the real question. I mean, it'd probably like trim a cloak, trim opinions. Bring in a couple glass caskets. Maybe Graveyard Hate's not even worth it. Like, Graveyard Hate, what? Shuts down Cat, maybe? And even that's hard to actually get the timing right. Yeah, let's just bring in the glass caskets. Make sure we can answer the Mayhem Devils and whatnot, and then trust that Colossus gets us there. Well, they went pretty good. I mean, our opponent did nothing, which made it easy, but ooh, this hand's actually pretty excellent. Gets worse if we get Thoughtseize, but I mean, this is all you wanna see. Artifacts, Nux, Metaware, Colossus, win. No defense, but I don't know. We got two redraws, which is nice. Blood Crypt, untapped, and what's one drop? Unlucky Witness. Well, there's a glass casket. Planes go. Glass casket's good. Thought seizes. So they take the Colossus. The problem they have is Colossus comes back. Maybe you take the Brass Knuckles. Although the problem with the Brass Knuckles plan is this hand has just a ton of random artifacts. Maybe you take the glass casket. The way I could see us, uh, one of the easiest ways of us losing this game might be our opponent double obbing next turn. Takes the Colossus. So I'm almost tempted to just hit this unlucky witness. Opponent passes. We draw a portable hole. Yeah, getting double lobbed would be really bad. Uh, do we glass casket, which can also hit mayhem devil, or do we portable hole, which can't hit mayhem devil, but can get rid of witches of it? I think we're definitely answering this unlucky witness in one way or another. What are we more scared of? I mean, if they had the oven, they would have played it. Yeah, let's just portable hole. Get rid of the witness, pass the turn. We just don't want to get double lobbed. Double lob would be really bad. Opponent swamp. Mayhem Devil, and oh, we draw the land, which is nice. So play the land, Glass Casket the Mayhem Devil. Pass the turn. All right, we're getting there. We're getting there, little by little. Opponent, Haunted Ridge. Another Mayhem Devil, and passes. Wedding Invitation, draw a card. Land? It is a land, all right. Play the land. Alchemist Vile, draw a card. I mean, we're getting pretty close. We can get back to Colossus. There's the Witch's Oven. If they find a cat, they can do some things. Opponent, combat, gets in, hits us for three. I mean, just drawing a Colossus would be nice too. We draw a Smith. I mean, I think we just go for it, right? Like, what's, we play Brass Knuckles. Get a copy of it. Sack. Get pinged. Get back to Colossus. Colossus. We're going to get pinged a bunch because we're sacking so many things, but uh, Sanctum of Ugin. Sack it. Metalwork Colossus. Sanctum of Ugin. Yeah, I mean, I guess we just go all the way. Metalwork Colossus. Can you beat Colossus Tron Sacrifice with one card in hand? Colossus. Colossus. Go. All right. That's a bunch of 10 tens. <laughs> Opponent needs like Extinction Event or something, maybe? Deadly Dispute. Gonna draw a couple of cards. I mean, opponent needs something borderline miraculous here. Opponent on depths. Land. Is this death? <laughs> Metal or Colossus death? Get him with the brass knuckles. Stack sweet. Oh, which is oven. Okay, one card in hand. Sacks the treasure, brings us to 10. Last card is Obnixilis times two. I mean, does this even save our opponent? So I get two obs. Makes a devil. Makes a devil. Now play inventors fair. Pinions. Make a treasure. Or one mana short. Equip it. Go to combat. Everything at our opponent. Blocks. Blocks. Sacks. I mean, opponents gotta draw wrath. They gotta draw wrath. I do not believe there's any way our opponent can win this game outside of like top taking extinction event. And I don't even know if they would play extinction event. So we get pinged, we get pinged down to seven. We got cards we can discard to the obs. Opponent ticks up, we'll discard a brass knuckles. Ticks up, we'll discard ingenious smith. Go blank, all right, sure. I mean, you got us opponent, you got us. <laughs> Sacks the food, opponent's making every action. They might be a little, a little disappointed. And scoops it up. Okay, that was, wow, that was so good. Is this deck just broken? Is this the best $100 deck in, in Pioneer? Crushing them, crushing them. Well, sweet, sweet.
budget magic time. We are Metalwork Colossusing in Pioneer this week. And uh, the sand looks pretty good. Missing blue mana, but we got redraws. We got the Colossus. See what our opponent's up to. Ooh, Spire Bluff. All right, we haven't played against, is it? Well, Sanctum of Ugin and Alchemist Vile. More Colossuses. All right, there's the Consider. Would really love to draw Blue Source. That would be the best. Opponent, Hall of the Storm Giants and Thing in the Ice. Well, Alchemist Vile. Land. Well, there's the Blue Source. Okay, we're, we're getting there. We're getting there. Might not be pretty, but we're getting there. Opponent going to consider. I mean, they shouldn't be able to flip the thing this turn, so next turn we can, like, portable hole glint nest crane. Opponent passing. Portable hole. Get rid of the thing in the ice. Pinions. Go. So we're up to seven? Up to seven mana. We're close. We're close to getting on the Colossuses. Opponent's also probably close to doing some busted things. Ledger Shredder and strategic planning. All right, so opponent's gonna be drawing cards pretty soon. It would be nice if we could get down. I mean, I guess we could play a Colossus this turn. Opponent passes. Spire of Industry. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Well, Spire of Industry. Yeah, I mean, one, two, three, four. Meta War Colossus. Not gonna sack our land though. Uh, new. No. Well, there's a 10 10 opponent. How do we feel about a 10 10? <laughs> Can you beat a 10 10? Opponent adapts. River Glide Pathway. Ledger Shredder Part 2. Gonna draw some cards. Ooh, Temporal Trespass. All right, so opponent's gonna take an extra turn. Nukes the Graveyard. Connives, grows the Shredders. All right. Well, I mean, not the most insane extra turn, but it is an extra turn. We drop to 19. The graveyard is empty, which is good. Quadruple strangle to kill to kill the Colossus. Bout it, all right? Lightning axe strangle. So opponent's just gonna cast their hand to kill this Colossus. I mean, I think we're kind of okay with this. All right, so opponent, <laughs> the triple strangle thing was a joke, but it kind of ended up being very close to that. So opponent's currently out of cards. We'd love to draw another non-creature artifact. That would be the best. So opponent hits us to 14. Ether hub. Well, one, two, smith. Go digging. Haunted cloak. Land. Get an energy. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, Eight, nine, ten. Well, one, two, three. Haunted Cloak. Ledger Shredder triggers, but it isn't that great with nothing in hand. All right, opponent discards. We'll see if they top deck like Treasure Cruise, that would be very obnoxious. Cast the Colossus. This time we will sack to get another Colossus. Oh, so close. Well, pass the turn. All right, opponent. What do you find? Anything but treasure crews, please. Ooh, wait. Does this mean we win? Opponent hits us. Don't they just lose to a hasty Colossus here? I think this means we win, right? Uh, Metalwork Colossus. What am I missing? Hall the Storm Giant. Okay, six. Nothing relevant. Okay. Well, uh, Metalwork Colossus. Trigger. Haunted Cloak. Haste. Go to combat. And opponent scoops it up. Wow. Okay, good enough. Good enough. Good enough. Well, that was pretty not bad. Oh, how do we fight this deck, though? All right, go down to cloak. Go down to pinions. Go down to cloak. Go down to pinions. Go down to smith. Oh, we need a lot of sideboard cards, don't we? Go down to smith. Soul guide lanterns. Glass casket. Mystical dispute. Oh, uh, maybe something like this? Is this weakening our deck too much? Oh, yeah, let's try it like that. Well, we got game one, which is big. That is super big. Pony even got the extra turn, and it wasn't enough. It's a lot of mystical disputes. Okay, I think I like that. Opponent starts with the tab land and passes. Island, go. So we do need to find a Colossus, but we can stop the first two drop here. I think we'll counter either. Yeah, counter the thing in the eyes. Untap. Another Knuckles. Now play the Sanctum. Glint Nest Crane. 
I mean, probably portable hole, right? Wedding invitation does redraw. Yeah, portable hole is probably more important. All right, pass the turn. Portable hole can deal with the next thing in the ice or ledger shredder, which is big. Opponent, Spire Bluff Canal, Ledger Shredder, and Consider. All right, well, I'm glad we took the portable hole, so we get to get rid of the Ledger Shredder. Chip in for one, and I mean, basically, we need to find, need to find a Colossus. That's the, the TLDR. If we find a Colossus, we're pretty close to going off with this Brass Knuckles in hand. Opponent, wow, discards pieces of the puzzles. Puzzle, piece of the puzzles. Opponent, yep, 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 considers in the hand, and passes. Soul Guide Lantern 2. Well, Spire of Industry, Soul Guide Lantern, get rid of Consider, I guess. Portable Hole. This does let our opponent connive, which is a bit awkward. Oh, discards another pieces of the puzzle. Get in, hit you. I'm surprised I don't want the pieces of the puzzle. That pieces of the puzzle seems very good. And a braid to get back the ledger shredder. Ah, uh, sure, that works. And ops ah oh, discards a strangle grows the shredder do we need to wrath the graveyard storm carve coast oh this is tricky 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 untap well we'll see see what we draw planes oh, play the planes brass knuckles shields down get a copy yeah pass the turn i think we might have to soul guide lantern here one, two, three, four, five, six. Yeah. Yeah, I think we do. We don't want our opponent to be able to treasure cruise. So I think we just got to get cards out of the graveyard. Opponent thing in the ice. And strategic planning. All right, refilling the graveyard. Conniving. Opponent's getting low on cards, but... Oh, I still want... Well, there goes a the treasure cruise. The opponent doesn't want the treasure cruise. Yeah, I don't know. I don't know if this works out for us or not. So the opponent refills the graveyard, gets in, hits us. Sure, sure, sure. Well, come on, Colossus. Come on, Colossus. Alchemist Vile. Play Ether Hub. Play Alchemist Vile. Draw a card. Ether Hub. Ugh. All right, well, pass the turn. All right, this is not, not ideal, not ideal. <laughs> this is where the deck the deck has felt so much more consistent but this is still where the deck can look silly when we don't find the colossus that is uh where most of the power of the deck is treasure cruise well i mean we are going to try to dispute this opponent drawing three would be bad for us okay opponent goes to combat hits us well can we find a mad or colossus down to 13 opponent passes even more lands. Yikes. Well, uh, brass knuckles. <laughs> Lots of brass knuckles, but not any metalwork colossuses. Pass the turn. Yeah, this is kind of the fizzle. One thing I'll say is Soul Guide Lantern is kind of somewhat budget graveyard. Hey, I think Unlicensed Hurst is probably the, the best option. More expensive non-creature artifact. Plus, against a deck like this, you could see, like, we nuked the graveyard, which was fine. But that's what we really want is re just to keep the graveyard low on cards. That's the biggest thing against this deck. Nuking the graveyard once doesn't necessarily beat it. It's the ability to keep the graveyard. Oh, no. Well, well, this hand's not not ideal. Uh, we'll pass the turn. Opponent. Make some tokens. I mean, I guess we could double strike the Glint Nest Crane. I don't think that's actually relevant, but we could. Opponent, pieces of the puzzle. Yeah, this is looking bad. Fiery Impulse, Galvanic Iteration. Okay. So they can kill the Glint Nest. If they cast a spell, it does flip the thing in the ice, which might be bad for our opponent. Uh, we'll block a token. Drop to six. Yeah, maybe they try not to flip the thing in the ice. Opponent passes. Oh, geez. Either of them. <laughs> well, I mean, we can just hard cast uh, some Colossuses for full price with this hand. Pass the turn. But it adapts. Goes to combat. Hits us. Yeah, they're just going to ride this Ledger Shredder. Well, we'll block. Yeah, I don't even think Colossus does anything now. Glint Nest Crane. I mean, we will attempt to cast it. It resolves. We find Glass Casket. Well, okay, glass casket. If they got a counter, this is the, the one to counter, I think. Discards iteration. Well, okay, get rid of the ledger shredder. Not dead yet. Not dead yet. Mostly dead, but not all the way dead. Boom. 
Take one. All right, consider flips the thing in the eyes. This is actually good for us because it means we get to recast the glint nest during our turn. Glint nest crane. Colossus. Now if we hit a Colossus, maybe. Oh, Soul Guide Lantern. Play the land. Soul Guide Lantern. Uh-oh. All right, going to kill the glint nest. Sure. Well, get rid of Galvanic Iteration. Pass the turn. Nuke the graveyard. Opponent. I mean, we're definitely dead to you, Arc Life. Jeez. Oh, Always pieces of the puzzle. There's the okay. So opponent hits an arc light. Ops. Yeah. So now we're now we're officially dead. Our plan was to use the alchemist vial to stop the thing and ice from attacking, but uh, with arc lights coming, you can see why Soul Guide Lantern's kind of medium, medium graveyard hate. Not the best graveyard hate. All right. Well, run it back. I mean, the big problem that game is we never found the Colossus. We just never, we never found it. And uh, without the Colossus, our deck can really not apply much pressure. Oh, we get to play first. No Colossus, but we got removal and we got a bunch of redraws, which I like. So Island and yeah, I don't think we Soul Guide Lantern yet. Pass the turn. We can get a card for free if we wait. A bonus. Spire Bluff Canal passes. Colossus. Well, play a Ether Hub and Alchemist File. All right, Glint Nest. I mean, we're piecing it together. We're piecing it together. Opponent considers. And what two drop do we have today? Ledger Shredder. Oh, there's a Smith. So I think we Glass Casket. Get rid of the Shredder. Spire of Industry, Soul Guide Lantern. Get rid of the Consider past the turn. I mean, if we can find our Colossuses, we could be in business. Graveyard currently empty, which is nice. All right, pieces of the puzzle, what do they find? Arclight, Consider, Opt. Well, I mean, the Soul Guide can get rid of Arclight, which is nice. Up and it passes. Portable Hole, Smith. There's a Colossus, Sanctum, Alchemist Vial. Grow the Smith. Ooh, and there's the Nux. There's the Nux. That's what we were looking for. Okay, pass the turn. Uh, we might have a shot this time. We might have a shot. This brass knuckle is big. Big, big, big. Steam vents untapped. Crackling Drake. That's okay, though. That's okay, because we have Metal Work Colossuses for days. That's only a 2-4 at the moment. Opponent passes. We draw Inventor's Fair. So play Inventor's Fair. One, two, three, four. Brass Knuckles. Double it up. Grow the Smith. Metalwork Colossus. Sac Sanctum. Get another Metalwork Colossus. Cast that Metalwork Colossus. Pass the Tur. Okay, those are two Metalwork Colossuses. Do they win us the game? Do they win us the game? We also have two Alchemist Vials, which can stop something from blocking. I mean, opponent needs answers. They need answers. Consider is not an answer. We can stop this Arclight from coming back to opponent. Steam Vents, untap down to 16. Six, seven, eight, nine, ten. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. So they still can't use the extra turn spell. I mean, I think Treasure Cruise is okay. Treasure Cruise isn't gonna beat us. How does our opponent stop two Metal Work? Claw? Hopefully they don't, but I mean, I guess if they can find an abrade or something that gives them some shot. Okay, leaves it on top. Young Pint Root Mancer. How many spells did they cast this turn? Consider, consider, plays a young pyromancer. Okay, nukes a graveyard. Opponent gets young pyromancer. Opponent passes. Gain a life. I draw Sanctum of Ugin. I think this might do it. We get to portable hole. Get rid of the young pyromancer. See if our opponent has a spell. Okay, they opt, but this is fine because we have two alchemist vials. The two alchemist vials, those are lethal, right? Sacrifice it, target creature can attack or block this turn. Wow, we took down Phoenix? Maybe this deck actually is kind of legit. So Pyromancer are gone. Alchemist vial, Crackling Drake. Alchemist vial, the token. And opponent scoops it up. Better work free, free Colossus crushing the best decks in the format. Treasure crews, delve spells, no matter to the metal or Colossus. Oh, this deck's, this deck's good. Well, sweet, 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 sweet.
budget magic time. We are middle work colossaying in Pioneer this week. Uh, a free to build on Magic Online version of a uh, Colossus. Colossus combo. This almost feels like a combo deck, really, with a uh, with how explosive the Colossus kills can be. Then the bugbear, right? Aggro A. Opponent gets in, hits us. Well, this would be interesting. Can we get the Colossi quickly enough? So we can redraw next turn. We kind of need to get the wedding invitation. We need to get an artifact down, basically, to make white mana. Maybe pinions is better? Opponent smacks us. Ether hub. Well, that is white mana. Well, let's Spire of Industry. And should we run out the Smith? Maybe that's better. It's not an artifact. Actually, let's pinions, I think. I'm a little worried about Eidolon. Eidolon's a huge issue here because our hand's so cheap. But this sets us up to Smith into something next turn off the treasure mana and grow the Smith. Smith doesn't do anything right away anyway. Come on, no Eidolons. No Eidolons. All right, Fanatical Firebrand, not an Eidolon. And play with fire. All right, so the Smith was going to die no matter what. I mean, this kind of works. We'll see. Going to need to find Colossuses at some point soon. Opponent hits us down to 14. Well... Ooh, Inventor's Fair is kind of nice. Hmm, but we need the treasure to gain life. So if we play Inventor's Fair, play Inventor's Fair, play Smith, get a Colossus. And yeah, then I think we just play another Pinions. This grows the Smith and it gets us enough artifacts that we gain life with Inventor's Fair, which is nice. I mean, I'm sure this is going to die, but at least it's a bit of a roadblock. No oh boy. Burning Tree into one two three four five six seven Ooh, we need the knucks we need the knucks we need the brass knuckles and we need them quick opponent hits us down to 11. we gain a life up to 12. brass knuckles brass knuckles Ooh, portable hole well play ether hub we also have the treasure mana to i guess get rid of the burning tree and then one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Yeah, let's wedding invitation. Could draw another removal spell. Ooh, we did draw another removal spell. Um, portable hole. Get rid of the swift spear. Well, that worked out spectacularly. So we dealt with most of the board, and we get a Colossus next turn. Only one at the moment, but still, we can't get down to the bugbeard yet. There's the bone crusher. Pona hits us for one. Sure. I mean, this is, this might be enough. Uh, one, two, three. Haunted Cloak. Colossus. Equip. Tenu. Opponent takes it past the turn. And this should be Flying Lethal next turn. Opponent needs a way to kill a 10-10. Opponent's Red Deck needs a way to kill a 10-10 or they're dead. Opponent adapts, thinking, crying, attacking. I mean, we are going to block here. I think we're more likely to lose by not blocking than blocking, so block. I mean, worst case, we just get back to Colossus anyway. Ember Cleave. Okay, so this actually does let our opponent kill the Colossus. Unsure if this will be enough to let our opponent win the game, though. So we take zero. We untap. We gain a life. We play Wedding Invitation. Draw a card. One, two, three, four. Oh, opponent scoops it up. <laughs> Did we have lethal here? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. Oh yeah, so we can just like sack the two portable holes. Opponent gets stuff back, doesn't matter. Hasty flying. Metal work Colossus. Yeah, all right. Well, <laughs> apparently we can beat aggro. Mono red, ether gus, and glass caskets seem decent. Going down. Probably like pinions, pinions, cloak. I like our early game blockers. Like, Glint S. Crane's kind of relevant. Smith at least requires a removal spell. Maybe one more Cloak, and then, yeah, all right, one Smith. I think Glint S. is probably better in this matchup just because three toughness right off uh, the bat blocks pretty well against Mono Red. Hmm, well, we'll keep this. Little awkward that we don't have any uh, blue mana. Oh, there's the Knuckles. This, this hand is shaping up. If we can find a blue source, it'd be sweet, but we can kill something. Knuckles, triple Colossus. Yeah, we're like a, a blue source away from this being really good. All right, opponent takes up the Saga, another Den of the Bugbear. There's the Eidolon, and there's our blue mana. So we will Sanctum of Ugin. Take two, get rid of the Eidolon. Pass the turn opponent flips the saga gets the hasty tutu plays a land and oh, ember cleave is 
That is a issue if they can cleave us here. Now draw an island, play the island. Glint Nest Crane. It's ugh, wedding invitation. All right, we'll see. We need two more turns to get our Colossuses down. Will that be enough? Or do we just die to cleave right now? About it. Ooh, burning tree, uh-huh, 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 uh-huh. Grows the annex, makes mana. I mean, if they have cleave, we're gonna die almost for sure before we can get down Colossus. If they don't, we got a shot. Ether Gust might be our best draw opponent. If we draw an Ether Gust, okay, stomp to 13, Eidolon. Well, opponent's out of cards. Six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. Yeah, this might be just too fast here. Ugh, yeah, yeah, I think they got us. Yeah, this was a good amount of red hand on the play. Colossus. So Brass Knuckles puts us to nine. I mean, I guess technically we're not dead on board. All right, I mean, Inventor's Fair. Brass Knuckles. I mean, I guess it's possible that we could live. We block the Annex, go to one. We're dead to a land, because then there's dead to the bugbear. We're dead to a burn spell. I guess the other question is, do we even live? Okay, dead to the bugbear land. Do they fire it up? Yes. All right. Well, mono red on the play. Pretty, pretty quick. Just couldn't get down. I mean, the burning tree to Annex, that was, that was a lot of damage. Well, we dodged the Embercleave, but we still died. <laughs> Good news is we're on the play for this game. That game, we actually just, mono red had such a fast draw because of burning tree that we actually died before we could even cast a Colossus. We we're also a little light on, oh, are we keeping this? Yeah, we're going to keep this. We got the Knuckles. Ether Gust is one of our best sideboard cards. So we basically just need the Colossus. Like, we have everything we need for the Colossus. We only get one redraw, though. Island, go. Well, wouldn't mind more removal or early game creatures than the Bugbear and Random Saga. More lands, not good. Wedding Invitation. Oh, no. Oh, no. Oh, no. I think this might be how the Undefeated Dream dies. Ooh, nothing worse than keeping a land heavy hand and then just drawing all lands. Oh, dear. Dear God, sweet mother of mercy. All right, well, uh, island go. Yeah, this is, this is the worst. Stomps her face, flips her saga, land, goes to combat, hits us. Sure, 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 down to 15. And annex, well, we will ether gust the annex. Let's slow things down. Oh, uh, come on, deck. Another Brass Knuckles. Well, uh, it's not a land, technically. Brass Knuckles X2. Should we have mulliganed, or was it just unfortunate that we drew four lands in a row after keeping it? Opponent. Annex returns. Well, we're going to need the Colossus now-ish to have any shot play with fire. All right, deck. If you ever wanted to be good to us, this would be the turn to give us that Colossus. Down to 11. Moon Snare Prototype. Well, I mean, I guess this technically can deal with the Annex, which is something, although that's still not what we were looking for. All right, so I guess there's some fizzle rate. I mean, it's magic. Uh, pretty much every deck has some fizzle rate. The deck has felt pretty consistent so far, but this game, <laughs> Torbrand. This game, not so much. All right, so opponent has a Torbrand. So I guess we have to channel the Annex? Actually, do we channel the Torbrand? Is that better? We channel Annex, we take four. We channel this, we take four. And this is more to recast? All right. Uh, all right, get rid of the Torbrand. Well, I mean, technically, if we draw Colossus this turn, we still have some hope. Although that hope is quickly fading because it's just going to be a single Colossus. Pinions. Yeah, now we're dead. All right, all right, all right. Uh, maybe it's unrealistic to hope for a free deck to win every single match. That was some uh, that was some clunky running. I mean, maybe that's our fault for keeping the hand. I mean, I think it was I think it was close. I think the hand was a little sketchy. So I could see an argument for just shipping it. The brass knuckles is nice, and we did have a redraw. On the other hand, it definitely didn't work out. Once we drew once we drew four more lands in a row and had like I don't even know nine lands and two spells or something. Uh, that was pretty much over against mono red. Can't win them all, I guess, with the <laughs> the metalwork clauses. Budget magic time. We are Metalwork Colossusing in Pioneer this week uh, with a build that's actually free on Magic Online, which is sweet. This hand's fine. We got no Colossus, but we have ways to dig for it. 
And if we find a Colossus, we get two Colossuses. And we got the Knuckles to get it down, so no Thoughtseize. Thoughtseize. Let's see how well our opponent knows what we're up to. <laughs> I think the correct card to take is probably Brass Knuckles. I guess I can see an argument for taking one of the redraws. Definitely not Pinions. That's that's the worst card to take. Sanctum of Ugin should be a giveaway, I think, as to what we're as to what we're doing, but see what our opponent decides. We don't know their hand. Takes the crane. Okay, that's defensible. Moon Schnapp prototype, eh? In that case, let's just Inventor's Fair and Wedding Invitation? We could Pinion's prototype off the treasure, but we might need this for removal. Yeah, let's just Wedding Invitation, that's fine. Wedding Invitation, draw a card. The upside of doing it the other way is we could get down the Brass Knuckles, but without a Meta Work Colossus, getting down Brass Knuckles a turn earlier doesn't do a ton. All right, pass the turn. All right, looks like Rakdos mid. Paroxa. Ah, uh, I guess we discard the prototype. Oh, but it passes. We draw planes. Well, play Sanctum of Ugin. Pinions. Get a treasure. Play Wedding Invitation. Draw a card. All right, we find a smith. I mean, I guess worst case, we can... We can probably get to the point where we inventors fair for the Colossus to start things off. Opponent plays a pathway and graveyard trespassa. Well, I think we brass knuckles. If we happen to draw a Colossus, we're in amazing shape. Otherwise, we're still not in the worst shape. Uh, so we get to gain a life. Portable hole doesn't do much. Well, play the planes. Brass knuckles. All right, so Colossuses are officially free. Should we get to them? A land gets us to Colossuses. Ingenious Smith could find us a Colossus. Opponent. Crucible, sure. Goes combat. Hits us for three. Eats the prototype. Down to 17. Blood Tithe Harvest, uh, sure. Well. Come on, Metawork Colossus. And another one. All right, so opponent running out their stuff, getting a clock going. We gain a life. Spire of Industry. Well, hmm. I mean, we can just sack Inventor's Fair and double Metawork Colossus. I mean, I guess that's probably the thing to do. All right, one, two, three, four. Inventor's Fair. Metawork Colossus, part one. Uh, cast the Colossus. Get another Colossus. So opponent could have like Dreadbore. Dreadbore is a card that they could definitely be playing that can kill Colossus. Fatal Push doesn't do much though. You're a go opponent. <laughs> can you beat two 10-10s? I mean, I think we just have lethal next turn, right? Pinions, Brass Knuckles, that's 20 in the air. And Dreadbore's a sorcery, so. They could also have Coligan's Command. That might be your opponent's best card. I don't know how many Coligan's Commands are in main decks though. Opponent, land, two cards in hand. I mean, they can Blood Token, I guess. Desperate Blood Tokening to try to find an answer. I don't know, the typical list, Dreadbore would be the answer. And Dreadbore just doesn't really do it. I mean, double Dreadbore would, but. They have to deal with both Colossuses or be able to kill one at instant speed. That would also, that would also give our opponent a shot. If they could kill them both at instant speed, Chandra, okay, that does nothing. I mean, I think our opponent's probably just dead now. <laughs> okay, Blood Tithe Harvester, Blood Tithe Harvester. This is a lot of, ticks up for mana. Wow, is this Coligan's command? Wow, that was impressive. Well, opponent had exactly the card that they needed. So when they go to target a metalwork, we can sack some stuff to get it back. Uh, yeah, we will sack two wedding invitations, get back the Colossus, take our beats. I mean, I think this still ends with our opponent dying. They might just live one extra turn. We draw pinions. One, two, play the pinions. Get a treasure. Portable hole. Get rid of a blood token. Sack. Uh, yeah, sack, sack. Get back the Colossus. All right, well, I mean, opponent had the right cards to deal with our Colossuses once. Unfortunately for opponent, uh, they're back. They are back and better than ever. Your go, opponent. Can you do it again? And opponent needed three cards last time. They needed Cola Cookins Command and those two Blood Tithe Harvesters. They have a Chandra and whatever they do for the turn. I mean, that's the power of Metalwork Colossus. The returning from the graveyard is a big part of what makes Metalwork Colossus a powerful threat. 
So we're back to the same spot. Opponent needs to be able to kill one of the, either kill both now or kill one at instant speed. Are we done? Have you been colossied? Okay, takes up Chandra, hits a land. All right, that's not a issue. We're down to 13. And Kelly Toss, that is also, all right, so that should do it. A bonus passes. I mean, we just double strike flying win. So pinions, equip, brass knuckles, equip. 10, 10, flying, double strike, and game. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Pony had the exact right answer and it still didn't matter. My work class is just too good. Too good, too big. Well, uh, let's do that again. What do we want against Rakdos midrange? Karn seems good, just to have a, a card advantage engine. This can be a pretty grindy matchup. So Karn, good. Is portable hole sketchy? It can't get Graveyard Trespasser. What about Soul Guide Lantern? I mean, they have Croxa, but usually this, these decks only play a couple Croxas. Yeah, go down, let's see, couple portable holes. Go down, opinions and a haunted cloak. Fighting the graveyard's probably not super worth it, but glass casket seems good. Maybe the ether gust? You know, let's go down one more opinions, one more cloak, and one more glass casket. Let's try it like that. Well, can we take down Rakdos? I mean, if we take down Rakdos, we would have beaten a lot of the best decks in the format. <laughs> <laughs> With our free Venomor Colossus deck. All right, opponent's on the play. What do you got about it? Ooh, double Karn. You know, I think we keep this. This hand is not super close to a Metawork Colossus, but we have double creature redraw, and I think these Karns could be pretty good. Everyone forgets about Karn Cyan of Urza, but OG Karn is actually still a pretty good card. Planes, go. Then the Bugbear and passes. Well, let's Ether Hub gain a life and do we want to run out the smith yeah probably smith run out the ingenious smith go dig in well we'll take the metal work clauses not metal work time yet but it will be eventually this puts us kind of close like this means if we draw a a brass knuckles we can start getting the clauses is going opponent untaps no black mana yet of newt wow still no black mana gotta be fable right fable the mirror breaker sure Opponent, off to a bit of a slow start, passes. Another wedding invitation. Wedding invitation, draw a card. Grow the Smith. Ah, oh, there's the Brass Knuckles. Okay, we're like <laughs> a land away, basically. Pass the turn. Opponent gets to do some looting, try to find their black mana. Oh, a land would be super nice. We might actually trade the Smith for this Goblin token. Ooh, they only just, interesting, discards a card. Opponent goes to combat, opponent attacks. Makes a treasure. Let's kill it. We don't want our opponent to keep making black mana, basically. Opponent, thought sees. Well, that's fine, this hand's pretty good. We mostly just want to draw land. If we draw land, we're in wonderful shape. We got the Karns, we got the Brass Knuckles. We'll have tons of options. Worst case, we can like Wedding Invitation to try to find the lands. Not as exciting, but still fine. But this is just a handful of, of artifact action. This is a pretty tricky choice. It's probably tempting to take the Colossus. The thing is like Colossus comes back though. So it's just like a temporary solution. I might, with two, one Karn, I would definitely take the Karn. With two Karn, Maybe you just gotta take the brass knuckles. I'm surprised our opponent did not loot more considering their blood. Yeah, they take the knuckles. That makes sense. Okay, so they have black mana. Blood Crypt untapped. And also duresses. Okay, so opponent had a ton of discard in hand. Now they probably have to take a Karn. Yeah, it takes a Karn. Opponent passes. We draw another Colossus. Well, wedding invitation. Draw a card. Please be a land. Moon Snare prototype. All right, pass the turn. Well, this is... This is awkward, this is awkward. Gets to flip, three cards in hand. Yeah, we're doing it the slow way because we're not hitting this last land. Opponent, mountain. Den of the bugbear, okay. That's, that's fine, that's fine, I think. Gets and hits us, sure. So we take four for now. Down to 16, we draw. Colossus, okay. Wedding invitation, draw a card. One, two, seven. Well, okay. Oh, this is so awkward. Moon snare prototype. 
Yeah, the, the lack of lands is uh, is getting us here. So we're up to seven mana value of nine creature artifacts, 700 untaps. I don't know if it's gonna be fast enough or not. We can play eight Colossus next turn, but that's not even that exciting. We're out of blue mana again, so we can't glint that crane. One Colossus a turn. We really just need more mana value of artifacts. Or the blue land would have been super helpful. Let's Den of the Bugbear take two. Yep. All right. So we're taking six. Like, this is kind of working for our opponent very slowly. Gets the tokens, hits us down to nine. Wow, are we going to lose to this? What a disappointing loss. There's the blue mana, finally, but it's so late. We could Karn make a Karn struck, but then if our opponent has removal, we take a million. Removal is likely what's in our opponent's hand. We could try to moon snare prototype, but that's not great. And they have this reflection. Like, moon snare would get us up to eight. I'll play Moon Snare prototype. Karn. Take it down. Make a Karn struct past the turn. So we're up to eight mana value. So that means Colossus is cost three. One, two, three, one, two. So we can double Colossus next turn. We'll see. See what our opponent has in hand. Blood Tithe Harvester. Okay. So that's a good thing to copy with reflection. Copies the Blood Tithe Harvester. Okay. Another blood token. Okay, hits the construct and stops. Okay, so they killed the construct. This doesn't let him kill the Karn though. Hits the Karn. Well, this means we get to take up Karn. Getting rid of this blood tithe harvester could actually be helpful here. Pona passes. Sanctum of Ugin. Well, take up Karn. See what we find. We would take pretty much any random artifact. Smith or Sanctum of Ugin? Smith. Well, we'll play the Smith. This should find us an artifact, right? Smith. Okay, Glass Caskets. That's a good one. Glass Casket. Sanctum of Ugin. Does this let us do everything? I think it does. So we get to Glass Casket. Two, four, six. Uh, get rid of Reflection. Metalwork Colossus. Sanctum of Ugin. Yes. Get a Metalwork Colossus. Metalwork Colossus. And one more Metalwork Colossus. Metalwork Colossus. <laughs> so not as fast as we like, but they're still here. Past the turn. About it on taps. Come on, tell us this is enough. Tell us this is enough. About it on taps. Triple Colossus. We're doing it without the brass knuckles this game too. We're doing it the, the hard way. I mean, we can just make all the Colossus is unblockable too, which is hilarious. All right, sacking the blood, desperation. Discards Croxa, sure. Do we get him? Do we get him? I think we got him. This is the best deck in Pioneer too, opponent. Oh my God, extinction event. Well, we did not get him. Was not expecting extinction event, okay. Yeah, that's that's a good one for our opponent. So there goes three Metalwork Colossuses. So this means we only have one left. Oh, that's super awkward. Everything at the Karn. Well, we block a goblin. Yeah, we might actually be in trouble now. That extinction event was pretty good for our opponent. Fire of Industry. Well, we will play Glintness Crane. Go digging. Glass Casket. Play the Glass Casket. Get rid of the Blood Tithe Harvester. Metalwork Colossus. Hit you for three. Down to 13, past the turn. Opponent, gonna kill the Metalwork Colossus. Runs out, Bone Crusher Giant, passes. Now there's the Knuckles. Play Brass Knuckles. Grow the Smith. Tap a Brass Knuckles. Tap a Brass Knuckles. Equip. Equip. Go to combat. Attack for eight. Opponent chumps. Metalwork Colossus. Get it back. Recast it. Pass the turn. Opponent untaps. Blood token discards Thought Seize. I mean, if we win through an extinction event getting three Metalwork Colossuses, that would be, that would be pretty impressive. 
Gives us a GG's. Oh, we got there. Okay. The deck has been legitimately awesome. All right. I mean, that was us taking down the best deck of the format through an extinction event getting three Metalwork Colossuses and a lot of disruption. So, well, if you want a free deck on Mono, might be the one, but yeah, we'll talk about it in the wrap up. Be right back. So what did we learn this week about Metalwork Colossus and Pioneer? And the deck kind of crushed it. We went four and one with the deck and we played against a lot of the best decks in the Pioneer format. We played Rakdos mid beat it. We played Is It Phoenix, beat it. We played Mono Red. That was the one deck that we lost to, which that one did feel kind of tough, especially for on the draw. But this felt like a budget deck under $100 in paper, free with the rental programs on Magic Online that actually can compete with the top tier decks in the meta. So I just love this deck. You might remember like a month ago, we played a couple of games with this infamous small Japanese tournament build of Metalwork Colossus. And we were intrigued by Metalwork Colossus with Brass Knuckles. That synergy felt really good. But the of the deck had some issues like we had a hard time finding Colossuses it was pretty airy had a lot of bad artifacts and then our Colossus just kept getting chump blocked and I feel like this build fixes all those problems it felt super consistent thanks to Glinton S. Crane and Genius Smith we were able to almost always find Metalwork Colossus I think we had one game where we weren't able to find it and kind of fizzled but in general we were always able to find it and then because of stuff like Sanctum of Ugid, we get a Metalwork Colossus it's usually two or even three Metalwork Colossuses and then we just win the game and then the other huge upgrade is Gilded Pinions and especially Haunted Cloak, which are so scary with Metal Work Colossus, giving us a potential for this out of the blue by surprise one shot kill where we like have Brass Knuckles for one mana we equip it, then we equip the Haunted Cloak for Trample in Haste and Vigilance, and then just smash you for 20. So the equipment package ended up making this deck even more scary. So I gotta say, I kind of love this deck. If you're looking for a deck that can compete with the top tier decks in Pioneer, on a budget or for free on Magic Online with the rental programs, I think this is the best option in the format right now. So anyway, that is Colossus Surprise. That's Metalwork Colossus in Pioneer. Thanks for watching, everyone. I hope you enjoyed it, and I will talk to you soon.